What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today, subreddit is r slash pro revenge. This story's called, Take My Tips and Pay Me Below Minimum Wage? See What Happens. Apologize in advance for the walls of text, but this has layers. So this all happened years ago when I was still in college. I worked for a delivery joint. The company seemed super cool because they provided vehicles instead of forcing you to beat down your own car. Huge perk, right? Well, in this case, no. The owner of the company used this as justification to take a percentage of the driver's tips. Often, this would result in an employee making below minimum wage. If you made below minimum wage, you would have to come and pick up your check in person and sign a document attesting that you did make minimum wage due to undocumented cash tips or some such nonsense. Now, this was a problem for two reasons. Number one, in the state I was in, employee tips belong to the employee unless part of an employee tip pooling agreement. This was plain as day on the Department of Labor website. So that 20 per- oh my god, 20%? Gouge was already crossing a line. Number two, you cannot just hand wave and or force employees to say they made above minimum wage. So pretty shady stuff, right? Okay, that's kind of messed up because when you deliver food, you pay a delivery fee, all right? A along with the tip. So like, what? What is this? What is this dude thinking? The owner's a jerk, man. Now, most people would see this situation and run for the hills, which probably explained the delivery driver turnover being so high. I, on the other hand, saw the potential. See, I am pretty well versed in labor law and decided that I was going to ride it out. I wanted to see how long they would keep this crap up. Here and there, I would make comments to the managers about the legality of their practices and was often told, a lawyer said it's okay, so it's okay. Would love to meet these lawyers one day. So I patiently waited for a year, documenting every red cent they took from me and encouraged the other drivers to do so too. Every new driver that came through that door got a little powwow with me and I would give them the skinny. I love these terms. Unfortunately, my plan must have leaked because sooner than later, the joint decided to fire me after making up three bogus infractions. If you're interested in those, ask and I'll explain in an edit. This wasn't a problem though, as my plan was already in action. See, in this state, unpaid wages collect interest. So what was 20 to $40 a night, five nights a week over one year quickly became a decent sum. So I began collecting the names of current and previous employees whom had been screwed over by the company and collected their documented data and then sent it off to the Department of Labor. At the end of the day, it took a couple of months, but the company was eventually required to pay a decent chunk of change to all parties and a pretty hefty fine on top. Overall, I believe it came out to a little under a hundred thousand. I wasn't done though. See those shady little documents they had a sign claiming we made over minimum wage affected how the company was reporting its payroll tax. The IRS eventually came in and hit them for a ton of back taxes, and I received a small portion of the settlement. The IRS used to pay people who tipped them off. Don't know if they still do. They still do. It's actually pretty cool. I haven't used it though. Finally, I was increasingly aware of the company's under the table agreement with the health inspector, which I decided to go ahead head and tip off to the health department. This resulted in even more fines and a temporary closure for the joint. Altogether, it ended up costing this dumb little delivery joint a ton of money just to stay open, all because they wanted 20% of their driver's tips. The moral here is, know your labor laws. It's degenerates like these whom profit off the ignorance or fear of the workforce. The more you know about your rights, the less idiots like these will be able to survive in the wild. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. Edit 1. Holy crap, I did not expect this to blow up. To address a few things, the infractions that led to my termination and their bullcrap nature are down in the comments. Hopefully they are not buried. I also wanted to address something I saw in the comments quite a bit. If you're in a situation that does not seem right, document everything. 
keep a little black notebook and write down everything. The most important thing you can do to protect yourself from nonsense in the workplace is document, document, document. If you are ever in question of something, be it disability rights at work or earnings, you can always contact your state EEOC branch or Department of Labor branch. They will gladly help you figure out what is and isn't proper. Don't be a person who gets taken advantage of by bad employers. Only by fighting back will they ever learn their lesson. Thanks again for all the questions, and thanks to you fine folk who found this worthy of an award. I probably won't edit again because the rules of the subreddit say to not make a lot of edits. If there is a reason for a big one though, I'll go ahead and make one. What a cool guy looking out for everyone, and himself. Um, yeah, it's important. Document everything, uh, because... <laughs> I, it, it, I, I don't really need to explain any further. You guys get it. Document stuff, which is something I don't do, have never done, and probably won't do, even though it's probably smart for me to do, because I hate tedious stuff like that. It's just, I just, I'm just not wired for it, man. Like, do you realize how bad I am at, like, just general everything? Like, time management? I'm probably eventually just gonna start paying someone to tell me when to start doing some work. Because otherwise, I just, I just don't... <laughs> It's not because I don't want to, it's just, I, I procrastinate a lot. Like, I wait until the last couple days before my rent's due to, to start doing work to make my rent. I thrive in the chaos I manufacture myself with my own laziness. Is it a bad lifestyle? Probably. But it works. <laughs> This story's called, Teacher Makes False Claim of Me Faking an Injury So My Mom Messes With Her Career. I apologize for format, I'm typing this on my cracked phone screen. I, 15, female, have had a long and elaborate history with injuries, especially breaking my arm. Starting from literally the day I was born, my health has been complicated. I have a few conditions, but none serious enough to impact my daily life as I know it. I have a very weak immune system and somewhat easy to break bones. On top of that, I am the definition of clumsy, and I'm also a huge idiot who gets herself into dangerous situations for fun. My mom, 40, female, has obviously known me from birth and knows just the extent of my weird bad luck and health issues. I've broken my arms a collective 13 times over my entire life, and almost every time I got injured or sick, it seems so somebody had something to say about it. I don't know why, but teachers just love to say that students that get hurt often are attention-seeking fakers, and a lot of relationships with authority figures have been harmful because of this. Every time, it's the same. For some reason, a teacher doesn't believe me, they call me a liar in front of everyone, I get bullied for a while, and then I have to try and prove that I'm not faking. I could post so many stories about teachers doing this, but this is a story about the time my mom actually managed to get revenge. This all took place around 7th grade. I was 12 at the time and had broken my wrist by climbing on top of something I wasn't supposed to be climbing on and then falling off like a dumbass. My wrist was in a Velcro cast since I'm very allergic to the regular cast material, as they figured out through many cases of trial and error. My teacher, let's call her Mrs. Tablet since this took place while we were learning about Egyptian tablets, she taught history and our personalities clashed a little. I'm more of a creative, adventurous, free thinker type and she was very conservative by the book and proper. We hadn't had any real issues before this, but we just didn't mesh well. She was absent one day and we had a sub in. I knew the sub as one of my teacher's friends and one of my mom's bullies, or one of my bully's mom. I didn't like her, but I was still respectful in class and just tried to get my work done. She got me in trouble for doodling on my paper once or twice, but other than that, everything was fine. Or so I thought. The next day, I went into class like usual. We were working on an assignment about Egypt and their tablets when Mrs. Tablet called me over to her desk. I went over thinking she'd just get on to me for drawing on the back of my homework or something, only to get bombarded with a bunch of really weird questions. The interaction went something like this. So, Fire, do you know why I've called you up here? I know Fire isn't my Reddit name, but it's my in-real-life nickname, so I'm using it here. No, ma'am, I can't say that I do. How long have you had that cast? About a week now. Why? Do you really need that cast? Uh, 
Yes? Well, the substitute told me she saw you take it off. It's a cast. I can't take it off. It would hurt. So if I asked the class, they'd say you need that cast? Yes? And if I called your parents right now, they'd say the same thing? Y yes, they were the ones who took me to the hospital. And she did this in front of the whole class. I was eventually dismissed and people looked at me weird for the rest of the class. As I later learned, apparently the substitute had told Mrs. Tablet that I'd taken off my cast as soon as I left class. I didn't. And that I threw it in my locker like, ha ha ha, I'm getting away with doing less work. So basically, she pretended I was a bad guy in a crappy high school movie. I don't know why she said this, but it had my teacher convinced that I was a liar and a fake. I technically could remove my class since it was Velcro, but that would have been extremely painful, and it's not like I could just walk around with it. I wasn't gonna make a big deal about it at the time, but it turns out she was serious about calling my parents, but she made the mistake of calling my mom. Now, me and my mother don't have a perfect relationship. She has anger issues, so we don't always get along well. But she loves me very much and doesn't let people like this mess with me if she can stop it. According to my mom, Mrs. Tablet called her all cocky and said things like, apparently your daughter is wearing a cast, did you know that? And, well, we all know how dramatic teenage girls can be, especially unique girls like her. She apparently even threatened to have me suspended before my mom stopped her and tore her to shreds for talking about her child like that. I don't think I'm allowed to repeat what was said, but by the end, Mrs. Tablet had to retreat with her tail tucked between her legs. She started being even more cold to me after that day and started giving me unfair detentions for not sitting still and doodling on the side of my worksheets. Even then, outside of school, we went to the same art studio sometimes. Weird that someone who hates art so much likes to paint. And poisoned the art director against me and got me put into a lower class. When my mom found out about this, she started the real revenge. My mom has never been a PTA mom. She honestly can't stand most of the PTA members and their kids are chosen favorites at my school and use this power to bully others, including me and my friends. My mom is, however, friends with a very lovely woman on the county school board, which has more power than the PTA. She told her friend everything that had happened and supplied all the doctor's notes needed to prove I needed my cast. Her friend managed to convince the rest of the board that Mrs. Tablet was discriminating against an impaired student. Given her comments about me being slower at work and just wearing the cast to slack off, along with detentions related to me not sitting still when she knew I had nervous movements and slight ADHD. At the art studio, my mother pulled me from the classes. I took it upon myself to inform the fellow kids about why, and rumors spread quickly. Soon enough, kids were getting pulled left and right, and my art teacher was pulling at strings to try and get the situation under control. I actually think the studio went into temporary closure before reopening again. She was suspended for a week to go under investigation, and it turns out she treated a lot of the unique, as she put it, students in a similar way. She was verbally reprimanded by two different departments, and instead of getting her standard raised over the next three years, she'll only get half of that. Not only that, but she had to retake a course on how to properly treat students. And if she's ever caught to cross this line again, she'll lose tenure. She'll just be getting her bonus back at the start of next school year, and I'd just like to say that I hope she learned her lesson. Edit, I had misremembered the punishments given to that teacher. Upon asking my mom to retell the story, I fixed it to make it more accurate. Thank you to the Redditor that pointed out the mistake. I suppose that my 12-year-old self remembered a raise as a bonus for some reason. Man, it really sucks that teachers, uh, some teachers are that just stupid. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a teacher, at least in my opinion, is a really important person uh, in anyone's life because <laughs> they're literally your educator. They, they're they teaching you things and, you know, they you learn a lot from them, not just, you know, from what they tell you, but from what you see. They're kind of like uh, another set of parents that you get new sets of every single year. I don't know. I really loved all of my teachers when I was growing up and like, you know, I kind of really, really want to be like a, a substitute teacher at like one of my old schools, you know, sometime in the future because that would be baller. And, like, I want to be a good teacher. 
and like you know i i try to like make it really cool and like you know just give it extra pizzazz make the kids excited to to learn something because i remember like when i was growing up like there were certain substitute teachers that we all love there was this one lady miss chris um she was so sweet she used to call me little cameron boy because uh my dad his he goes by cameron his last name is cameron or i guess our last name is cameron and he was you know pretty well known around the town because he owned a bunch of gas stations and it was a tiny ass town so that was kind of a big deal plus we had really good pizza but anyway she'd call me little cameron boy she was just so nice um but kids took advantage of that and like you know they just never respected her really they just liked her but i was respectful and i think she appreciated that all right this story is called middle school kleptomaniac versus me this was some years ago when i was in middle school i was not necessarily bullied but there was a girl who was somewhat obsessed with stealing my stuff it started with pencils and pens then those collectible eraser toppers then homework water bottles and more she was a little rude but not bad enough to be afraid to talk to and would deny it every time in fact i even got in trouble for losing binders and worksheets not stop. This led to many tears. I wanted to confirm that she was the one stealing, so I told her that I really loved a particular leaf. Middle schools are dumb, don't judge. I only told her during recess, put it in my locker, came back from class, and it was gone. Yep, she's the robber. My family had recently gotten a key finder, which is a little fob to put on a keychain that beeped when you press a remote button. With a little help from my dad, I carefully opened the top of a pocket-sized candy box, those chalky valentine hearts and stuck the key finder inside. In bright, bold letters, I wrote my name on it so everybody would know whose it was. The next day, I put the candy inside my desk without showing anybody. When it came to be recess time, the class would have to line up in the hallway to wait for the teacher to walk us out to the playground. I went out first and waited before most of the class. When the girl came out, she cut in front of me, of course, just before we started walking. I pressed the remote button and sure enough, there was a beep, beep, beep sound. It startled a few kids before they figured out it was coming from inside the girl's sleeve. She realized a bit late and only managed to drop the candy after the class started staring at her beet red face. Oh no. Being in middle school, I was giddy that my scheme worked and let out the cheesiest villain cackle, picking up the candy box and holding it like Simba, with my name right on the box. Everybody knew she had been the one stealing my stuff. I swear, I remember the teacher laughing too. She never spoke nor stole from me again. Okay, I don't want to nitpick, but it's kind of funny. So like when you add parentheses, I'm pretty sure like you're supposed to be able to remove the parentheses from the sentence and it's supposed to be, you know, <laughs> a functional sentence. So remove the, se uh, the parentheses from that last sentence. She never spoke from me again. <laughs> It's funny. Anyway, that's clever. I dig it. Um, I would have loved to have one of those when I was a kid. I would do some crazy things with it. Don't ask what, though. I could get in trouble. <laughs> uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.